time for this weekend's Capitol Report. Pat McGuigan is here. Okay, let's talk about the post-debate polls, because some of them are out now. What do they show you about the presidential candidates? Well, we talked a little bit about it last week, and, you know, my my feeling was what would be important is where things were by the weekend or early this week. And sure enough, uh, Governor Romney did get a bounce. The average of the polls, which is fascinating, is um, gives him a one and a half percent edge. Um, Gallup poll has him two points ahead. The Pew poll is particularly interesting because it had him on Tuesday, Wednesday, a full four percent ahead, almost at fifty percent, forty-nine to forty-five. Now, I'm not a big fan of um, uh, horse race, mm -hmm. you know, analogies, and there are so many polls today. There are literally over a thousand, if you count the battleground state polls. Compared to when I was a young man, there'd be seven or eight polls conducted between early October and Election Day. But uh, it shows that Romney did get his bounce. Here's the problem for Romney is that the president continues to lead. Barack Obama continues to lead in the battleground states mm -hmm. in the most, in, for the most part. Okay, now uh, we're now less than one month away from the election. Talk about who has the advantage at this point in the race. I think a president, an incumbent president, always has the advantage. Uh, because he's the president. You know, at this point, he uh, uh, has surged again in funding. Uh, the very latest jobs report, at least in terms of the traditional unemployment rate, was um, better than it had been at any point in his presidency. Of course, that's also a point of criticism, is that it's only uh, a little bit better than at any other point in his presidency. Uh, the presidential stage is always significant, and this is October, mm -hmm. so let's see if the last, uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't say the last few days, let's say if the next 10 to 12 days brings some kind of a surprise that the president is then able to package into uh, advertising, that could make a difference. The undecided is so small, mm -hmm. and it's shrinking. Okay. And now talk about uh, President Obama's. You, you have said in the past that maybe his fundraising had stalled, but now he's back on track to be the $1 billion man. Yeah. Talk about what that means and, and you know, how that's going to play into his success. Yeah, I think it was last winter. That to, to give myself credit, I also used the term the billion dollar man, and it looks like he's back on track to, he'll bump somewhere over a billion dollars by the time uh, all the fundraising for the election is done. Why? A lot of it is the legacy of hard work by him and his people for two years and the series of fundraisers running, running right up through a couple of days ago uh, where now he's turning away from fundraising. He's going to concentrate on the last two debates. Uh, the president is a capable, intelligent man. He's shown that with his uh, fundraising surge um, and a lot of other things uh, that he's been trying to do in the wake of a pretty rough first debate performance. Okay, now can Mitt Romney compete with, with the president in the money race? Yes, he can. And here's the interesting thing, is that in some markets at least, uh, I'm a little bit dubious as to the news stories that say he's actually going to outspend the president late on advertising. I don't know if that's true. We'll see. Uh, but he's certainly done a good job uh, and they had a couple of days where they raised twelve, fifteen million dollars right after the debate. Uh, and even in this age, that's a lot of money for a couple mm -hmm. of days of work. Uh, so I think uh, uh, the governor is competitive, yes. Um, I will say that uh, it will be interesting to see what both of them do at the very, very end with their advertising time. That's going to be significant. Okay, now you're sporting a little bit of facial hair today. Talk about what that's about. Well, um, uh, I talk seriously and often about the role of the Constitution in our country and about the rule of law. Twenty-five years ago this month, uh, Robert Bork, uh, a nominee to the U.S. Supreme Court, was in the latter stages of what turned out to be uh, a rather definitive defeat in the U.S. Senate for confirmation to the court. He was President Reagan's uh, first nominee in 1987. Ultimately, Anthony Kennedy was confirmed. Uh, Bork is, uh, can be kind of a gruff man at some times. Um, however, he's the greatest man I've ever known. And at the time of his nomination, I, I sported a beard because he had a beard, and I called it Beards for Bork. Mm -hmm. So in his memory, and I'm using opportunities like this to say, what's the role of government? You know, mm -hmm. what should it be? Is it to meet our needs or to keep us free? Mm -hmm. uh, is it to um, 
uh, give us things we need or to protect us from aggressors mm -hmm. and enforce the law. I'm doing that in honor of Robert Bork, and every time somebody asks me a question about the beard, I tell them. You get them. to share this story. <laughs> right. All right. That's this weekend's Capitol Report. Thank you so much, Pat. And have a great weekend, folks.